Hello, my name is Ben Lovegrove, and in this video I'm going to read a section of the CAA's Safety Sense leaflet number 3, Winter Flying. The leaflet has been reproduced here in video format with the kind permission of the CAA. To download a copy of this or any other in the series to print off or store on your device, please visit www.caa.co.uk forward slash safety sense. Introduction the purpose of this video is to advise pilots and operators of aeroplanes, helicopters and microlights of some of the problems they may encounter while flying in winter. Pre-flight A. There may be a greater risk of water condensation in aircraft fuel tanks in winter. Drain fluid from all water drains. There can be as many as 13 on some single-engine aircraft. Drain it into a clear container so that you can see any water. B. When refueling, ensure the aircraft is properly earthed. The very low humidity on a crisp cold day can be conducive to a build-up of static electricity. C. After flying high such that the integral wing tank fuel has been cold soaked and the ambient air is humid and cool, frost will form. If it is raining, almost invisible clear ice may form. D. Tests have shown that frost, ice or snow with a thickness and surface roughness of medium or coarse sandpaper reduces lift by as much as 30% and increases drag by 40%. Even a small area can significantly affect the airflow, particularly on a laminar flow wing. E. Ensure that the entire aircraft is properly de-iced and check visually that all snow, ice or even frost which can produce a severe loss of lift, is cleared. This includes difficult to see tea tails. If water has collected in a spinner or control surface and then frozen, this produces serious out of balance forces. There is no such thing as a little ice. F. The most effective equipment for testing for the presence of frost and ice is your eyes and your hands. G. The best way to remove snow is by using a broom or brush. Frozen snow, ice and frost can be removed by using approved de-icing fluid in a pressure sprayer, similar to a garden sprayer. An alternative is to melt the ice with hot water and then leather the aircraft dry to prevent refreezing. Make sure that control surface hinges, vents etc. are not contaminated. A scraper might damage aircraft skins and transparencies. H. Do not rely on snow blowing off during the takeoff run. The clean aircraft concept is the only way to fly safely. There should be nothing on the outside of the aircraft that does not belong there. I. Check that the pitot heater really is warming the pitot head. But don't burn your hand, use the back of it, or flatten the battery. J. Beware of wheel fairings jammed full of mud, snow and slush, particularly mud, as it is dense and doesn't melt. On one occasion, 41 kilos, nearly 100 pounds of mud, was removed from the three wheel fairings of a four-seat tourer. If the fairings are removed, there may be a loss of performance and removal may invalidate the aircraft's C of A. Check that retractable gear mechanisms are not contaminated. Also, remove mud from the underside and leading edge of wings and tailplane. It seriously affects airflow. K. Water-soaked engine air intake filters can freeze and block the airflow. L. If hand-swinging a propeller, perhaps because of a flat battery, move the aircraft to a part of the airfield which isn't slippery. Use chocks and a qualified person in the cockpit. Don't try it unless you've been trained. M. If using external power, you may need to ensure that master switches are off until external power has been removed. N. During the engine run-up, check the use of carburetor heat gives a satisfactory drop in RPM or manifold pressure. O. Check de-icing boots, particularly the tailplane, for condition, holes, etc. Wiping the boots with approved anti-icing fluid will enhance their resistance to ice buildup. 
That's the end of this section of the CAA Safety Sense leaflet number 3 Winter Flying. If you have any additional tips or experiences you would like to pass on then please post a comment below. Subscribe to my channel and click the bell to be notified of the next video in this series. Please share this video within the general aviation community so that pilots and student pilots can benefit from the advice.